we have so much more? Do you, do you, do you, oh, we have three. We have three. Okay. Usually we have more people, but three is a great number. Lots of great things come in threes, and today will be no different. So I'm really glad you're here, um, and I'm here. And um, for people who don't know what watching work is, do you guys, I recognize you, and have you been here before? Yeah, it's been. I, and I'm looking. Have you been here before? You look familiar. Yeah, you look familiar. Okay. So you guys know what this is. Great. A lot of people don't know what watching work is. They're like, so I sit and watch you work. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's part of it. But um, basically, it's a free writing class for people. Who anybody? You don't even have to sign up. You just drop in, and I'll talk to you about your writing or your creative process. If you're not a writer. Or if you're thinking about being a writer, all that kind of stuff. All right, so you guys know what we're going to do, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to sit and we're going to work for 20 minutes, and then we're going to do the rest of the time, we're going to spend in a Q&A, which is basically me talking to you guys about your creative process, okay? So any questions you have um, are welcome, because that's what I'm here for. And Audrey, you're going to tell the folks if there's anyone watching online today, how we, can we just... So if you're watching online, what you can do is you can tweet at our Twitter handle, which is... <laughs> are those unicorn socks? Yeah, they're flying. They're, they're flying rainbow unicorn socks. Yeah, yeah. Those are nice. Thank those you. are very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, so if you're watching at home, you can tweet at us at, at WatchMeWorkSLP and do hashtag HowlRound, which is H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. Exactly. So said, yeah, that's complicated. H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. And what's the first part? What's the which part? Uh, oh, well, at WatchMeWorkSLP. That's a lot. That's at WatchMeWorkSLP. Hashtag HowlRound. That's a lot. It is a lot. If you, the secret is if you really do at WatchMeWorkSLP, It'll be fine. I'll oh, see okay. it. Okay. I'll see it. So yeah, so we'll answer your questions. Yes, we yeah. will. We will. Amazing. Okay. Truthfully. Yeah. Truth will answer them truthfully. That's true. I know truth is uh, not in fashion. <laughs> a la mode. Not a la mode, as they say. But uh, you know, hey, here we are going to swim against the current convention. <laughs> I like that. Swim against the current of convention. That sounds good. It does it? sound good. It sounds like someone already wrote it. <laughs> okay, so uh, oh, I'm going to start my time. set a timer. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. go. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Nope, not that. One, two, and. Okay, here we go. See you soon. See you soon.
you guys get some work done? Maybe? Oh, good. You might fix the ribbon of the typewriter. I don't know how it gets all tangled up right between, like, one of the mysteries of the universe. All right. So, um, do you have any questions about your creative process? Your creative process? You have to remind me of your names because there, there are a few of you. So, in the back, man, what's your name? Kevin? Hi, Kevin. And your name is? I'm Jim. Jim, okay, I don't have to And Aaron. Aaron. And are you here for watching her? Yeah. Okay, if not, I'll just leave you alone. What's your name? <laughs> Amy. Amy, hey Amy. And are you here for watching her? What's your name? Jane. Hey Jane. Hey. Okay, anybody have any questions, comments, answers, solutions? Does anyone know where the treasure is buried? You do? Jim knows. Yeah? Uh, oh. I, no, I don't know where the oh. treasure is buried. <laughs> I do have a question. Yes, yeah, I I now have a draft of a play that I've written. Right. And I want it deals with a sensitive subject. Okay. Although it's not a realistic play, it deals with the end of slavery in the South. Okay. There are two black characters and four white characters. Okay. As you can see, I'm an older black man, an uh, older white man. So my question is, I have no problem giving offense where I want to. Right. But where, how do I share this work with a wide enough audience to make sure that I'm not stupidly being insensitive to certain Things. Does that make any sense to you? Sure. I, yeah. I think, well, I mean, not knowing the specifics of sure. I understand. I'm, just, I'm assuming it's like beautifully written and righteous. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go there with it. Yeah. So, so your your question is it? So, plays that deal and any subject, we'll just say, we'll so lift it out of the specifics because um, I don't know this, I don't know your play, but any subject. So, we're writing a play or something about a sensitive subject, a subject that could, if, if, it could give, could make some people go, hey, what are you doing? Why are you saying that in your play, right? Um, and we wonder how you workshop it, you mean? How you, like, what you take, like, what step do you take, what's the next step you take? I, I guess I'm afraid, just putting it, say, in a forum like on the internet, Oh, it frequently is. Oh, I find those forums are insensitive. Yeah. Because people can say things without yeah. consequences. Yeah, that's true. So true. very anonymously. Very true. That it that it just winds up being people throwing stones. Right. Right. I, I have no problem with it really being picked apart, but maybe I would. More like a lot of Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that I think that's the only way to go. And and regardless of the subject matter of your work, that's the only way to go. I mean, yeah, and you said it really well that that the that you want to get feedback from people who are going to have to stand behind what they say and at least be visible. You know, this is me. I'm saying this to you about your play. You know what I mean? That you want to generate a. a an actual conversation instead of just uh, an opportunity for people to, or whatever, you know, right? So that, that, I mean, that's great, actually. That's a lucky thing, right? Because I'm sure you know people, right? You know a few people. It has four characters, you said? Six. Oh, six, okay. Okay, so it's got six characters, so I bet you know six people who might be able to read the play. Do you? Okay. Can you start with them? Yes, I guess so. Yeah, in maybe your living room or the living room of a friend. You know? You know? Maybe? Yes, and in oh, fact... What, what, what do you think? Yeah. And in fact, a friend of mine has offered oh. when she 
and, and is a director. Oh, great. He teaches in North Texas now. Right, She'll be great. here for the summer. Great. And even invited. I guess maybe my fear is the audience for that would not be racially diverse. And that's oh. what I would. But, but that gives me a start. Yes, and, yes. And if, if there is a start there, then the job is much smaller. It is to ensure that the audience for that reading is more racially diverse than it might be if I didn't make an effort. Exactly. To so tell, tell me this. So there, there are six characters, and what's the racial, what's the... Four, two black characters and four white four, characters. Right. So, I mean, you could even... Your casting, in a way, ensures that the audience will be not 50-50, but racially diverse. And you don't have to invite anybody to the reading, other than the actors and the director. So you could, no, totally. It's called a reading of your play, and it could be, you could sit in chairs or in a circle. You could sit at a dining room table, for example, and just sit around and read it, you know, and then talk about it. You know, you meaning that the actors would be your audience also. And they could give you feedback. I'm hoping that they'd be people you know or know of, and you know, you kind of are inviting uh, people that you have a good vibe about into the early stages of a project. That's what we always want to do, right? So then you have them sit around a dining room table or in a circle, and you read the play, and then you have a conversation about it. And that's one way to have to start off a work. I mean, I've done plenty of readings where there's no audience per se. There's just us around a table, you know. So that's, I mean, and then from there, you can maybe do a rewrite if you want, or with your director friend. Maybe, okay, great, and now in a week's time, we're going to do another reading, and this time we're going to invite people, you could say. Or in two weeks' time, if they're here for the whole summer, your director friend, you do one at the beginning of the summer, you do your rewrite. By the end of the summer, you have another reading. Maybe invite back the same actors, and then invite a proper audience, you know, maybe a handful of people or whatever you want. You see, and then you can do the work about cultivating the audience and maybe have a, maybe you want a Q&A after, you know, a talk back after, or, you see? No, that's helpful because yeah. actors have to get into a character the way right. no one else does. Exactly. And they can critique it exactly. in a really particular way. Exactly, so exactly. Like They're a wonderful resource, you know. Actors are a wonderful resource and great allies in the creation of uh, theater pieces, you know. And sometimes give awesome ideas and notes and, you know, um, or help you understand a character, even if they you don't know, change a word, they can help you have a you know. Oh wow, I see this character in a different light or something. So yeah, actors are really, really, really helpful. As a good director, um, so it sounds like you're in good shape because you finished the draft. Which I actually started here. There you go. In Look, December. Right on. Oh, wow. yeah, Say, say, oh, I'm so pleased, I'm so proud of you. It sounds corny, like I'm not your mom, obviously. <laughs> or obviously, or maybe I am, Duh. But, uh, but, uh, congratulations. Age is kind of reversed. Right, well, well, we're, we're so, so, uh, family here. And congratulations, that's awesome. That's why I sit here most every Monday. Because I know there are a lot of people who write and do creative things that can't afford the tuition over at NYU, um, where I teach, you know, or don't, you know, for whatever reason, aren't going to be showing up at NYU anytime soon. And um, it's nice to have this place to encourage people and to hear about how you're doing. Fantastic. So you'll keep us posted. That's really great. So when does your friend come in town from North Tech, your director? It should be the end of the we're in May now. Yeah. Yes. So the end of the, the month? End of May. Yeah. Fantastic. When, Fantastic. When her term is over. Fantastic. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could have a reading hopefully in June, do a rewrite in July, have another reading in August. Will she be here the entire summer, kind of? Yes. Great. So you really want to maximize her presence, you know, and have those two readings. One with no audience and the next one with Many people will see a partner or the venue can hold, you know. Good job. Yay! Good job. Anybody else have any questions?
find myself um, getting, always getting very caught up in, in like logistics and small plot points when I'm, even when I'm just trying to like right. go, mm -hmm. and then and then it slows, it sort of slows me down. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. and I haven't figured out a way um, to to. To, to sort of push it aside and just right. continue, and and it's and it's it's kind of like always going down a, a rabbit hole, trying to think three steps ahead, and then uh -huh. I just don't. Fi I do the opposite. I just don't finish. Right, right, right. right. And so I haven't. I guess. I guess the question in there is like, how do you have suggestions as to as to how to literally tell myself that this thing isn't that important, or at least it's not important right now, or uh -huh. just to stay, yeah, focused on what the immediate sort of narrative ahead is. Right, that's, that's Aaron, right? Yeah. So, there, I mean, there are two things. There are two things. Has anybody else ever had this problem before? You get, you know, it's like, it's like you're walking down the street and someone says, hey, 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 yeah. I mean, you, you're going, you have a meeting to go to, so, hey, hey, yeah. and you get off the sidewalk and you're walking over here talking to this person, yeah. and you know that they don't really have anything important to say to you, but you're, right? I mean, would you ever do that? Or it may be important, oh. but it's just not important right now. <laughs> ah, see, this is the thing. Okay, okay, that, that's very good. I, I love that you answer that way. So this is what you have to do. So the first and foremost, tell yourself, and this is true, that what that person is going to say to you while you're on your way to the meeting is not important. It's not important. I, 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 I don't care. You can look, I don't care. I don't care what you have to say. <laughs> you know, there you are, you're, you know, but I, I don't care, whatever. And, they, and they, you will notice that they change appearance. And they will, they will change appearance trying desperately to get your attention. You see? So, and which is why I'm not being specific about any certain thing that you have because Basically, you are believing that maybe they might have something to tell you. It's not true. Okay? That feeling is generated by a, a concern that, well, maybe what I'm doing is not important enough or good, or so I'm going to go over here. Okay? So, what, where you're going with your work is more important than what they have to say. If they start talking and you haven't even gotten off your path to listen to them, you can just write little post-its of what they're saying. But keep going. Your job is to continue in the direction of the finish line. Right? That's number one. Okay? So you kind of have to, like, the mantra, like, I'm just going to go to the finish line, or whatever mantra, talk to the hand, whatever you want to say to those people. Okay? The second thing that might help is make an outline before you start. Okay, have you ever... Have yeah, you no, I, I okay. do that. Great, great. <laughs> um, so even with an outline, even with an outline... Well, it's just that, like, I find myself, like, I'll be, I'll be trying to work through something, or even what I was doing just in these 20 minutes right. is I'm sort of I'm re-entering something that I started writing two years ago right, and I right. haven't touched right. since. And, um, and I find myself just, like, trying to, trying to create that outline, but then, like, thinking of like backstory elements that I mean like right. your your idea of sort of having something on the side to right. write right. seems both like the best idea and that I could also like get lost in that. Right, you know right, what right, I mean? Right, so right, 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 but right. that's it's those kinds of it's those kinds of things. It's just like trying to sort of structure from the the top and then all the little details that right. and then getting caught up with the question of does that make sense? Is that Realistic? So is that you know that's that's where I sometimes spin out of the. I understand. Yeah. The loudest voice in your head needs to be the voice of whatever it is that's going to get you to the finish line. So does that make sense? Right. What's the answer? Good enough for now. Right. Whatever answer you can give yourself to get you to the finish line, that's the that's the right answer. Is that important? No. All right? Keep going forward. Okay? You can, you can, I mean, it's not like, you know, F you and all that. I'm just saying, you can note it down. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Do you have kids? Yeah. Great. How old are they? Four and two. 
great. You can do. You, you have. You have no. This is no. You have no problems. Oh, okay. You're a dad. You've got two kids. They live with you. You interact with them. Okay. You have no problem. You're. I have a six-year-old. This is easy. This is. This is like. You. You. You, you got two kids. I only got one. Look. You completely. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing, Dad? I'm. I'm, I'm walking here. You know how to keep right. Like the kids. Wait. Right? 
I know. Stuck is like my real name. I know. So, so what do you what do you do that works? Do you have anything that's ever worked when you get stuck? Um, I tend to take a lot of walks. Walks. Walks are good. Yeah. Um, or I I just kind of free write. Free writing is great. Right. Free and writing I, is great. And I just end up with a lot of funny dialogue that has nothing to do with any kind of actual plot, but it just right. keeps going. Right, 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 right. Um, does it get you over the hill of stuckness, or does it... Not always. Right. So it kind of just puts you in a, like a roundabout, a little... Uh, right, and yeah. I start, it kind of goes into circles. Right, right. <laughs> just, they're just having conversations. One thing that does help is it, it helps me a little bit with character development. Oh, good. So they good. come more to life. Right. Oh, good. Um, but um, where I really get stuck is is the, the plot just doesn't seem to go anywhere. The plot doesn't seem to go anywhere, right. Are you, are, are you an outliner person? Do you yes. outline? You do outline. So before you start writing, you have a map. So the, the, the fact that you said the plot not going anywhere, doesn't it go somewhere in your outline or no? Um, my, my outlines tend to sort of, I, I, think, I think what it is is that uh, even if I have the outline, I can't get from one place to the next. Even if you, have, even if you know the next thing is, right. you don't know how to get there. Get from it. Just from one right, right, right. one spot to the next. Right, right, right. How what transpires to get them to that next right, place? Right, right, right. Okay. So you said when you we get stuck, you you do a lot of you know free writing, and that helps you develop your characters, which is a good thing, right? Because maybe you're stuck because you don't know enough about them, right? Because if you know what the next scene is, you know what they're reaching for. You know that, right? So Mary and Joe, and they're in this scene, and the next scene takes place and in the car because they're going on a road trip. So they have to get from the apartment to the car. You know what they want. Are you clear on what the characters want, scene by scene by scene? Not always. Okay, so you can do these things. So while you're free writing, you can do a little Sometimes it's helpful for me to do to kind of stop like uh, take my pin off the page and stop writing, writing, poetic beautiful things that come out, you know, all that kind of stuff, and just go and do math, math, my kind of math, which is basically make little charts. Like, okay, I have a character named Hamlet. Let's just say, do we all know Hamlet? Yes. Hamlet, great. Yes. yes. <laughs> Good, okay, we all know Hamlet, okay? So Hamlet, okay, I have a character named Hamlet, and he wants what, would we say? What does he want? You know Hamlet. Figure out his father, figure out how his father died. Figure out how his father died, right? And he finds himself on a, well, in the first scene. Where does he find himself? Uh, the outline looks like this. Scene one, it's the parapet, the, 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 the castle walls, right? And his... One of his friends, he's not on stage yet, one of his friends says something like, who goes there or something, I don't know, paraphrasing. Okay, so by the time Hamlet comes on the scene, he wants to know what happened to his dad. So everything he does, scene by scene by scene, is moving him toward that goal. The thing that gets him stuck is that he's not sure if he really wants to, or if when he finds out what he's gonna do about it, right? But do, um, it's maybe not a good enough, he's a tricky character, but he wants something. He's reaching for it in every scene, right? So, you have a grid that says Hamlet. Well, you're stuck, right? The character's name is on a piece of paper, or type of Hamlet, you know, character name. What do they want? What are they doing in this scene to get what they want? What are they doing, right? And Hamlet, he's, talk, he's daring to talk to the ghost. You see what I mean? What is he doing? He's not just standing there. He's going, wait, dudes, Horatio and friends, I'm going to talk to the ghost. None of them are talking to him. They're just going, Woo. He's going, I'm going to follow it. Remember, he follows the ghost. Right? Yeah. And he has a private conversation with the ghost. You see what I'm saying? What is he doing in this scene to get what he wants? And you do that with every single character in the scene. What are they doing? 
And in my world of theater, talking does not count as doing something. Yak, yak, yak. What are they doing? You know what I mean? He's daring to talk to the ghost. He's going a little further than they did before. You know, he's doing something, right? So. Bless you. Okay, you see what I mean? So go through it, and when you're stuck, just ask, what, what are the characters doing? And if you don't know, turn to the character and ask, what are you doing in this scene? What physical activity are you engaged in right now? Again, talking is not as good as... Does that, does that help? And then you can get, then you can see how they go from one uh, plot beat to another. several months ago, and it was very helpful for me. But the wonderful thing is, say you have four characters in a scene. If you're asking each what each of them wants, you actually are setting up like almost vectors of force for an individual scene. And you've got your conflict mapped out, and you know where it's, or can, know where it's going and, and, and guide it. But I, I that that was very helpful to me really early on in this. When you do have several characters, it, it's wonderful because like I say, you've got it, it's almost navigating it for you if you really map out what everybody wants moment by moment. That's really important. And then, it, it, once you're really clear about what the character wants, by seeing the play takes on a life of its own, it starts to kind of move along on its own and steam. And you're not necessarily, you're not efforting to play along. The play's kind of, okay? But so when you get stuck, that's a thing.
Aaron over here. Oh. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, you're right. Because Aaron had a similar question. That's great. No, no, it's okay. Uh, this is all the same question. Did you guys? Did you guys? I'm gonna talk really loud, not because I want to. There's a party down there. Okay. So Han said, so you've got an outline, and then you're listening to the character's voice, and you find that it's totally pulling you off the outline. And you think, this could be helpful. This could be good. This could be better. And then what kind of writing are you doing when you step off the outline? What kind of writing are you doing? Dialogue, scenes, like that? want each scene, you know what they're doing in each scene to get what they want, right, to move the I would say if you're veering off, when you step off the path, one step is fine, two steps is fine, three steps, and you kind of can't see the path anymore, right, stop. Look at your outline again. See if somehow your divergence from the path can be incorporated into your outline, right? No, but I would try to get back on the path. I mean, I, I really, you know, the, I try to stay on the path. What I do is I do a thorough outline, like, am I really feeling each beat? Am I clear about what the characters are wanting each beat? But when I find myself straying from the path, I really work to get somehow back on the path and at least bring to conclusion this thought, the original outline. Um, if I can bring this thought to conclusion, then I can look at it, I can invite some friends over to my house, we can have a reading, and then I can see what it is, instead of trying every little thing that might pull my attention. And I was telling, we were talking about Aaron, to Aaron with kids, you got, do you have kids? No, I don't. Okay, well, kid, they pull your attention, we were talking about kids, how they would pull your attention. <laughs> That's okay, but we have to, so I just have to keep to your path. And this might be interesting, write a post-it note, keep a notebook of every interesting idea that's going to take you off the path. It might turn into the very thing that you're looking for, but if you are constantly hopping off the path, it's going to take you so much longer to get your work done, and it might be frustrating. Okay. Because when you talk about it, you make a sad face. <laughs> I mean, if you were like, hey, and I found this cool thing, and then I was like, yeah, this is great. Oh, this is it. They just have to keep going. You're, you're on to something that's great. You know what I mean? But your face kind of was a sad face. So, or a worried face, you know, like, ah, oh, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because what happened was that I ended up thinking, oh, do I need to rewrite a completely new outline based off of the things that I thought? Well, this is good. Am I throwing away my, you know, just like literally throwing most of the things away and then restarting? Right, right, right. I would say stick to the path. I mean, that's kind of sad. It doesn't sound like it's, a, you know, exciting or anything. It's like being married or dating somebody that you really like. Have you ever done that? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so, so, you know, there you are. You guys have traded rings and you're in love and, you know, and, and, oh, oh, look at him. Look at that one. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to go over here. No, it's not over here, right? Well, look, they have a... a they call it six pack abs or whatever. Oh, I like that. Oh, look at that. Oh, you know, whatever, right? You want to stay on your path and kind of try to find the good thing about the one you're with. That's kind of, and if you get, then you get to a certain, no, but really, I would say get to the end. Take notes, though. Oh, I'm thinking, take notes. And I take lots and lots of notes on your phone, on a, a, a post-it, right? And then at the end of your draft, you can then take a look at those notes. And maybe they can be incorporated into your draft that you already have. Yeah, 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 I'm not 
saying throw it out. I'm not saying ignore it. But I'm saying don't let it pull you from getting your work done. I mean, are you rewriting? You're rewriting the second draft, then, right? Yeah, I just feel like I need to redo a whole brand new outline because there's things that I love and then there's like well, but that's a, but that, no, and that's a difference. That's a difference. That's okay that when you're doing a rewrite and you're bringing in new things. Oh. But it, it, it's tricky. If you find yourself not getting your work done, you're making a choice that's not helpful. But I mean, the, the second draft. The second draft. Yeah, uh, I'm looking for the first draft. The second draft, I'm like, oh, what do I keep? What do I cut out? Do I start a brand new outline? Right. Well, that's a rewriting question, which is... Oh. No, no, it's, a, it's totally fine. It's a little... Yeah. It's a little hard. But it's a rewriting question. So there's a rewriting question of, finish the first draft already, and then how do we know what to keep in and what to cut? Right? And that's true. Have you had a, a reading of it? Have you had folks read it for you? I gave it to a few friends. Okay, okay. Different feedbacks. Okay, have you had a live reading? Like when you invite some people over to your house, we're talking about Jim about this, where we invite some people over to our house and sit around our dining room table, maybe? That could be really fun. How many characters are you playing now? Do you, do you have four friends? Yes. <laughs> so you invite your four friend, right? And you allow them to read your play, and then you can have a conversation about it. And then you, at that point, after the conversation about what's on the page, you can say to them, and I got this wild idea about such and such. What do you guys think of that? Right? So there's a way to, to start a rewriting process. Okay? Thank you. Okay, I got it now. It's just so fun. We are done. Anybody behind the camera? Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to be back May 21st. May 21st. So um, thanks for coming. You guys are great.